Hello and welcome to this first video for Electric Pages at Embedded World 2025 in Nuremberg. And honestly, I'm looking around and it's a really exciting day. Today we're at Octavo Systems and I think we've been here before last year yes. where you showed some really cool hardware where you, you basically pack a lot of stuff into a single module. Now, thank you for being here today. Hi. Great to meet you again. Yes. And sure. the first thing I'd like to do, uh, to do is just tell the audience who you are, what you do and what you like to do in your free time. Ah, so my name is Eric Welsh. I am the Chief Technical Officer here at Octavo Systems, and I really enjoy uh, designing embedded hardware. That's that's really what is I, that what I, you do in your free time? That's <laughs> actually what I do in my free time. I miss uh, two of us. I, I I design embedded hardware, and I actually enjoy uh, working with students and doing uh, different types of of projects with embedded hardware. So it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, right. Getting the energy from students is, is oh, always, oh, oh, always oh, oh, honestly education has always been one of those things for me as well that I really enjoy. And like you say, teaching someone something new and then watching them understand it and then using yes. it themselves, it's honestly it's it's, it's very it's, rewarding. Exactly. Exactly. But for our audience, <laughs> just quickly go over what it is that you guys do in terms yes. of the, in terms of the uh, the modules, and yes. then we can move on to the new stuff that you've so been working on. So we are in the uh, the business of system and package. So what we do is we take dye from various uh, silicon manufacturers, such as Texas Instruments, ST Microelectronics, as well as uh, AMD Xilinx, and we integrate that along with power management and high speed memory into a single package device. So what we do is we take all of these components, we use advanced manufacturing techniques in order to get them in into nice small packages like this. So this is uh, our new AM62 product. So this uses the Texas Instruments AM62. Right. So I'm just going to quickly oh, interrupt. Sure. Now I'm going to go over there and quickly grab one of those oh. uh, samples because ah. I just want to show the video this very yeah, yeah, quickly yeah. because because this is ah. what you're saying about your new product, and I've just oh, seen why you're very yes, excited. Yes. Oh, he's got one in his pocket already. I do. <laughs> oh, you've got two now. Yes. So so originally, what's really cool about this? So this was the products from last year, wasn't it? If yes. I remember correctly. Yeah. Yep. So. What you've got is you've got all these passive parts and a lot of the chips, and they're all put into one module. Yes. So essentially, you know, you, you take everything you need into a single package. Yep. Now that's a really awesome package, but it looks like what you've done is you you basically shrunk it by about what looks like thirty percent, maybe more. Yes. So so basically, what we did was we integrated for for our new product, we integrated the processor and the DDR as well as a number of passives and made it in the size of a DDR module. So you can see in our in our older system and package oh, yeah. devices, this is our DDR memory as well as, uh, so you can see our processor, our power management, and our DDR. Now uh, in our new products, we actually uh, put the processor and the DDR in the same package shape as the DDR. So this is a nine millimeter by 14 millimeter uh, BGA device. Oh, and crazy. that actually integrates uh, one gigabyte of DDR4 as well as uh, the AM6254 processor. So quad core A53 um, that uh, has very interesting graphics and stuff like that. And you're able to do all sorts of really cool human machine interface uh, type display. And if you want to, you can try to see if you can see what's inside. So basically you can see that, that we bring there's the AM62. Oh, oh. I think I just broke your step. Oh, uh, step up. Oh, there you go. There we go. Oh. Almost. But so you can see that we actually have the AM62 uh, die uh, with the DDR stacked on top, oh, yeah. and then wire bonded down uh, to the substrate. So, so I suppose my first question then is, how does how does this differ from the old module in terms of because it looks so, like this one's significantly larger? Correct. So really, what we're doing right now is we've changed our architecture a little bit so that. The first product we come out with uh, in terms of a, uh, a, a, a processor family is going to integrate the processor and the DDR only. So really just the, the processor and the high speed memory. And mm. then that provides a nice foundational platform so that allows you to, to get to all the different types of applications that you might want to have. So uh, what we found in some of our older system and package devices is that certain power decisions that we have to make in order to do integrate power management inside a system and package doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Uh, we, we had mm. a customer trying to go into MRI machines, and oh, because wow. we integrate DC-DC converters with inductors, they couldn't actually use our system and package device. That's so, not going to work. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what we, yeah. what, we, what we did was we decided to go with an architecture where we integrate just the memory first, right. and then we're going to integrate a larger system and package device. It'll be more this type of form factor, 21 millimeters by 21 millimeters, but that'll now integrate the processor, the DDR, and the power management, and mm. additional things. So, so just to be clear, mm -hmm. the, small, the, the newer, smaller one, it, it, take, it takes some of the power management out of it, but, that, but that's so that you can choose what kind of power management Correct. you need. Because Correct. like you say, even though this has been great for most customers, there are those edge case customers who can't use Correct. that kind of hardware. So I can think, for example, maybe a drone operator can't use that power management system. Maybe their batteries are the wrong voltage, Correct. or they need a more efficient system. Or something. And, so, and so that actually makes a lot of sense. 
But what I'm really quite quite interested in is how you put it in a DDR3 uh, so, package. So really, that's that, that comes with all of the advanced packaging that we're able to do. So we work with all these dye manufacturers, both uh, from the processor side as well as from the, the DDR side. And now we're able to do dye stacking uh, as far as... as Wait, uh, dye, dye, dye. Oh, yeah. So if oh, you, wow. you can see, so the if you look... Um, at the, to the there's a, a, a like a shiny one, and then there's one with a bunch of copper on the top. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and so basically, the shiny one is the processor die that's sitting underneath the DDR I, memory. That's right my on my, top. my vision is really bad because I thought it was a shiny die on the right, and then the other die on the left. No. It's actually like like this stacked, stacked on top of each other. Oh wow! What what's really unusual is that the, the way that you stacked it, it's actually got an air gap below the die, so it doesn't even need to be like carefully stacked. It, it, it's no. like it's like doing this. Correct. So you've got this. Yeah, and it, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it works. Oh yes, no, no. So the, and that's that, and what we're doing is we're basically we're doing different die stacking configurations and stuff like that. And so that allows us to be able to get that realize these types of form factors with uh, all these dies. You, you know what's really funny is that that package makes me feel like oh that's such a cool design. But then I see the one with the die. <laughs> my, my 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 OCD mind is going crazy. Put some resin under that. But that's but it does oh, yeah. but it does demonstrate that you don't need to have. Oh, a complete like a complete blush. Uh, no, but yeah, well, everything gets over molded. So basically, it all gets sealed together. It has resin. Oh, uh, of course, yeah. So, when, so when, yeah. It, when it's encapsulated, exactly. Right, when, that makes when, sense. That makes sense. Once you're encapsulated, then everything yeah. everything's really nice and held together. Yeah. You have that really high reliability that you get with system and package. Yeah. And yeah. so you're able to do all of these really types of interesting things. And so, yeah. And so we what we've done is we've actually designed reference platforms. So you have open source uh, hardware and. Uh, that you can use in order to build your own uh, design from. So this is a four-layer PCB, uh, no backside component, or uh, this one, yeah, the, this one has some backside. The, I have a newer version. Actually, the newer version doesn't have backside components. Ooh, so. fresh, off the, fresh off the, yeah. Why don't we call it? Fresh well, off the, this, 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 this one, ah, I catch. I know. Uh, so this one, actually, uh, the only thing on the backside for this new board is uh, the LVDS connector. So no backside components on the board. It's a four-layer PCB. Um, so basically, you're able to do these types of, of highly uh, sophisticated processor designs in a four-layer PCB um, with, with very uh, low-cost uh, PCB design rules and everything. Fantastic. Yeah. So just to give me a rundown in terms of performance, uh, how? So, so tell me the process that's used on so, this one so, versus the old one. So this, so this is an AM6254. So if you're familiar with the Texas Instruments uh, processor family, originally we did uh, processor families around the AM335 series. So that was a single core A8 running at a gigahertz. Uh, this is this is a quad core A53 uh, running up to uh, I think 1.2 gigahertz. Hold up. So so this one is a single core one gigahertz. Correct. This is a which quad core. Is like maybe 25 percent of the size right now you've got a quad core yes what about what about in terms of ram uh so this this integrates up to one gigabyte uh this will integrate up to two gigabytes so the, the base model for this one is 512 the base model for this one is is one gigabyte and i suppose my next question is would you are, are, did you say you're planning to put that kind of device into that kind of package so that with the power management with and everything the, else exactly exactly so again we, we want to make sure that you're the that depending on what you're trying to do from a design point of view, you have as easy a time as possible in order to be able to, to make your design, uh, or to realize your design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer the processor module so that if you need to do your own power management, if you have certain power uh, requirements that require extremely low power or no inductors or something like that, yeah. Um, then you're able to do that. But then we offer a fully integrated uh, version of this where now we integrate the power management. Uh, we also look at our, are looking at integrating other things like Wi-Fi and some connectivity. Um, so it just kind of depends. Uh, we're looking at what else we can integrate in because uh, we do actually have a little bit of extra space. Mm -hmm. so, so in terms of applications, I'm trying to think of what I would personally use it for. And I think I would use it for things like drones, uh, right. maybe, maybe lightweight applications. But then another area that kind of comes to my mind and I can't, keep, I can't get it out of my head is that I would love to see something like this used in a very large parallel design. So maybe some kind yeah. of scaling or well, you know, yes. whether it's simple servers or whether it's something like, I, I don't know, maybe large scale experience. Is that something that you think this could be used for? Yeah, no, like, you've, the, the, the ability of system and package to keep that miniaturization. So it, it's also, it's small form factors. So yeah. 
you can also look at uh, how could you augment like existing infrastructure. So if you want to make smart buildings or something like that, and you need to retrofit just in the light switches, you can add a lot of smarts in yeah. something in an existing form factor that's really small. Or if you want to add like a breaker itself, like re uh, repurpose the breakers in your breaker box, uh, you have the ability to fit certain electronics. So there's really small form factors, but then you can start looking at how do we uh, do multi-processing? Because at the end of the day, these have pretty low power envelopes. Um, and so, yeah, putting these together in, a, in an array of servers and trying to uh, do some parallel processing would be really interesting. Because I'm also curious about the power consumption. So what are we looking at in terms of these modules? So really, these are in the one to two watt range. Um, and, and this comes back to that parallel idea, because exactly. I mean, if, if that's able to run a web server, let's say you can run a, an oh, yeah. Apache web server, yeah. and then you have maybe 100 of them in a unit, you're using 100 watts. But in terms of like the performance per watt, compared to a typical rack server, you're probably yeah. getting a hell of a better deal yeah. on something like this and something exactly. if you buy as, a, as an enterprise solution. So yeah. that's why I'm sitting there thinking, I've got to use this in some kind of server or some kind of data center because it just <laughs> feels like it's got a massive amount of potential in that area. Yes, exactly, exactly. No, there's a lot of really cool applications that you can do with these types of processors. And on top of that, sorry, sorry oh, yeah. to interrupt, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, imagine a grid of them, and, oh, you, yeah. and, and you've already got the Ethernet controllers inside them. Correct. So you can wire all your local your, your local LAN on all a single PCB. Exactly. And then the only, I, honestly, <laughs> it, 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 my, my mind is just really racing at the moment, thinking, oh, but then I can add this, and I can add this, and I can add that. So, yep. it, and, and just to be clear to the audience, this thing, you can, <laughs> basically wire this thing up with a bunch of wires in the back and get it working. The USB yeah. would, be, would be nothing more than a USB connected to that chip. The uh, yeah, the, uh, the, um, the video would be nothing more than a, a direct connection to a, a video port. The same with the connectivity and storage. So, a great so idea. Yeah, here you this go. is an example uh, that we, we did where we actually debugged. Uh, so this is a full Linux computer. Uh, basically, it is uh, the AM335 processor, high-speed memory, as well as an EMMC integrated. And we were able to flip it over, wire up USB and power, and, and able to, to run a full Linux computer on the chip uh, just with de the dead bug. And, and that, again, perfectly demonstrates how this thing is, it's got so much power, and yet to use it is incredibly simple, low amount of energy. That's why I'm sitting there thinking large-scale service, data centers, cluster computing, all these kind of things. Again, it's small, good for drones, but honestly, I'm thinking bigger with this thing because, and yep. now, now, you've yep. got the DDR package, yep. right? Yeah, exactly, I know. Now, now I'm thinking RAM sticks with a bunch of them, of yep. these machines, in parallel. Exactly, you can do all sorts of really interesting things. It is absolutely fantastic. Video up, now, the up. audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Octavo System Solutions, what would you recommend that they do? Uh, so first, really, just come to our website, octavosystems.com. And then that way it allows you to get access to data sheets, uh, reference designs, uh, all of our documentation about the products themselves, as well as getting started with some of our software infrastructure in terms of Yocto and everything like that. Um, so you're able to, to now get started and then really just uh, contact us and figure out what, what you're trying to do and we'll, we can help you through that whole process. One of the things we pride ourselves on is our level of support and service uh, and we help you through that entire part of that or the entire design process from kind of you have that initial idea, let's help you through the schematics, let's help you through the layout, let's help you bring up that board and then that way you can realize your design. Fantastic, well I don't normally say this but you might actually have a customer right here. Thank you ever so much for taking time to see us today, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.